Section 1 of Wheels, The Fifth Cycle This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Eva Davis, Nemo, Newgate Novelist, and Algy Pug. Cornucopia by Osbert Sitwell To Edith Now music fills the night with moving shades. Its velvet darkness, veined like a grape, obscures and falls round many a subtle shape. Figures that steal through cool, tall colonnades, vast, miniaturian corridors of sleep. Rhythmic they pass us, splashed by red cascades of wine, fierce flashing fountains, whose proud waves shimmer a while, plunge foaming over steep age-polished rocks into the dim, cold caves of starlit dusk below then merge with night softly as children sinking into sleep but now more figures sway into our sight strong and bare-shouldered pressed and laden down stagger across the terraces they bear great cornucopia of summer fruit and heavy roses scented with the noon piled up with fruit and blossoms all full-blown crimson or golden as the harvest moon piled up and overflowing in a flood of riches brilliant plumaged birds that sing as the faint playing on a far sweet lute warble their tales of conquest and of love perch on each shoulder sweep each rainbow wing like lightning through the breathless dark above heaped up in vases gems shine hard and bright sudden they flare out gleaming red like blood for now the darkness turns to swelling light great torches gild each shadow tear the sky as drums tear through the silence of the night breaking its crystal quiet making us cry or catch our sobbing breath in sudden fear a shadow stumbles and the jewels shower onto the pavers with a sharp sweet sound they mingle with the fountain drops that flower up in a scarlet bloom above the ground a beauteous changing blossom then they rain onto the broad mysterious terraces where sea gods rise to watch in cold disdain before those vast vermilion palaces watch where the slumbering coral gods of noon drunk with a sudden golden light and flare of flaming torches try to pluck and tear that wan enchanted lotus flower the moon down from its calm still waters thus they fall like flowing plumes the fountains of our festival slowly the torches die they echo long these last notes of a bacchanalian song of drifting drowsy beauty born of sleep vast as the sea as changing and as deep and thanksgiving for sheltering summer skies still far away a fervent red light glows small winds brush past against our lips and eyes caress them like a laughing summer rose and rainbow moths flit by in circling flight a harp sobs out its crystal syrupings faintly it sounds as the poor petal wings fragile yet radiant of a butterfly beating against the barriers of night then from the ocean came the siren song heavy with perfume yet faint as a sigh kissing our minds and changing right from wrong 
chaining our limbs making our bodies seem inert and spellbound dead as in a dream end of section section two of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain church parade by osbert sitwell the flattened sea is harsh and blue lies stiff beneath one tone one hue while concertina waves unfold the painted shimmering sands of gold each bird that whirls and wheels on high must strangle stifle in its cry for nothing that's of nature born should seem so on the sabbath morn the terrace glitters hard and white bedaubed and flecked with points of light that flicker at the passers-by reproachful as a curate's eye and china flowers and steel-bound beds flare out in blues and flaming reds each blossom rich and opulent stands like a soldier and its scent is turned to camphor in the air no breath of wind would ever dare to make the tree's plump branches sway whose thick green leaves hang down to pray the stiff tall churches vomit out the rustling masses of devout tall churches whose stained gothic night refuses to receive the light watch how the stately walk along toward the terrace join the throng the paces carefully up and down above a cut-out cardboard town with prayer book rigid in each hand they look below at sea and sand the round contentment in their eyes betrays their favorite fond surmise that all successful at a trade shall tread an eternal church parade and every soul that's sleek and fat shall gain a heavenly top hat from out the church's gothic night past beds of blossoms china bright beneath the green tree's porous shade we watch the seaside church parade end of section section three of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain sunday afternoon by osbert sitwell the gilt-fringed earth is sadly spun a sector of its lucent arc about the disillusioned sun of autumn the bright angry spark of heaven in each upturned eye denotes religious ecstasy we too have spun our sunday round of church and beef and after sleep in houses where obtrudes no sound but breathing regular and deep till sabbath sentiment well fed demands a visit to the dead for autumn leaves sad thoughts beget as from life's tree they clatter down and death has caught some inner net even on sunday in this town though money and food and sleep are sweet the dead leaves rattle down the street fat bodies silk enmeshed inflate their way along if death comes soon they'll leave this food sweet earth to float heavenward like some huge balloon religion dims each vacant eye as we approach the cemetery proudly we walk with care we bend to lead our children by the hand here where all rich and poor must end this portal to a better land to which if in good business all have hereditary excess where to afford the saints belief from prayer and from religious questions round after round of deathless beef flatters 
celestial digestions where in white robe with golden crown we watch our enemies sent down to other spheres while we lean out divinest pity in our eyes and wonder why these sinners flout our kindly pitying surprise why look so angry when we play on gold harps as they go away a hymn tune dear familiar but now we stand within the space where marble females drape a tear above a whiskered marble face isn't it pretty even now rich and exotic blossoms grow about each granite monument of worthy men all fully dressed and for some slight emolument a weeping willow guards our rest look over there a broken column is watched by one geranium whose scorching scarlet tones uphold damnation and eternal fire to those who will not reckon gold who are not worthy of their hire for marble tombs are prized above such brittle things as thoughts or love the crystal web of dusk now clings from evergreen to tropic tree tossed by the wind that subtly brings a mingled scent of mould and tea that causes silence to be rent by one scream childish but intent for children will not realize that they should rest without a sound with folded hands and downcast eye here in the saint's recruiting ground and so in sorrow we turn back to hasten on our high tea track but after in the night we dream of heaven as a marbled bank in which in our continual stream we give our gold for heavenly rank where each saint standing like a sentry explains a mystic double entry the director of the bank is god stares our foes coldly in the face but gives us quite a friendly nod and beckons us to share his place End of section. Section four of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. De Luke's Two Poems by Osbert Sitwell. One, him. Above from plaster mountains, wine shadowed by the sea spurt white wool clouds as fountains whirl from a rockery these clouds were surely given to keep the hills from harm for when a cloud is riven the fatted rain falls warm through porous leaves the sun drops each dripping stalactite of green the chiseled treetops seem cut from malachite stiff leaves with ragged edges each one a wooden sword are carved to prickly hedges on which with one accord their clockwork songs of calf love stout birds stop to recite from cages which the sun wove of shade and latticed light each brittle booth and joy store shines brightly below these the ocean at a toy shore yaps like a Pekingese. Two, nursery rhyme. The dusky king of Malabar is chief of eastern potentates, yet he wears no clothes except the jewels that decency dictates. A thousand Malabaric wives roam beneath green tufted palms, revel in the vileness that Bishop Heber psalms from honeycombs of light and shade they stop to watch black bodies dart into the sea to search for pearls by means of diabolic art magicians keep the sharks away mutter utter each dark spell so that if a thief should steal one more black would go to hell but mrs freudenthal infers from brioche dreams to mild surprise awakes 
the music throbs and purrs the cellist with albino eyes rivets attention is in fact the very climax pink eyes flash whenever nervous and pain racked he hears the drums and cymbals clash mrs freudenthal daydreams ice spoon halfway to her nose till the girl in ochre screams it's out at the girl and rose this is not at all the way to act in large and smart hotels angrily the couple sway eagerly the riot swells girls who cannot act with grace should learn behavior stay at home a convent is the proper place why not join the church of rome a waiter nearly drops the tray twenty teacups in one hand now the band joins in the fray fighting for the promised land mrs freudenthal resents the scene and slowly rustles out but the orchestra relents waking from its fever bout end of section section five of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain at the house of mrs kinfoot by osbert sitwell at the house of mrs kinfoot are collected men and women of all ages they are supposed to sing paint or to play the piano in the drawing-room the fireplace is set with green tiles of an anchithus pattern the black curls of mrs kinfoot are symmetrical descended it is said from the kings of ethiopia but the british bourgeoisie has triumphed mr kinfoot is bald and talks in front of the fireplace with his head on one side and his right hand in his pocket the joy of catching tame elephants and finding them to be white ones still gleams from the jungle eyes of mrs kinfoot but her mind is no jungle of ethiopia but a sound british meadow listen then to the gospel of mrs kinfoot the world was made for the british bourgeoisie they are its swiss family robinson the world is not what it was we cannot understand all this unrest adam and eve were born to evening dress in the southern confines of belgravia eve was very artistic and all that and felt the fall quite dreadfully cain was such a man of the world and belonged to every club in london his father simply adored him but had never really liked abel who was rather a milksop nothing exists which the british bourgeoisie does not understand therefore there is no death and of course no life the british bourgeoisie is not born and does not die but if it is ill it has a frightened look in its eyes the war was splendid wasn't it oh yes splendid splendid mrs kinfoot is a dear and so artistic End of section. Section six of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Malgré Louis by Osbert Sitwell. The voices weave a web of futile sound. A fan is dropped by Lady Carabas, restored to her but mrs kinfoot frowned guarding the door as cerberus has passed but suddenly great waves of sound obtrude upon the pleasant party in this room while we enjoy the music's interlude outside there swells the trumpet call of doom mosaic tombs or unmarked graves asunder they all are rent king dodon from the dead arises 
while the quivering heavens thunder he smooths his robe and calmly shakes his head free of the age's dust but now the voices of those condemned for judgment will not tarry shrill out in woe but one alone rejoices for mrs kinfoot scents another quarry the army of the dead are on the march to meet their maker on his ivory throne he sits beneath the rainbow's radiant arch dispensing judgment oh a tone a tone but mrs kinfoot saw a sailor sinner with one arm leave st paul's and walk away and mrs kinfoot longed to give a dinner to meet the judge upon the judgment day above god's head a dozen sons kept guard like sentinels her erring feet were led up to a crowded hill where god's regard was fixed upon her and he gravely said and kinfoot worthy mother and good wife your weakness and your faults are all forgiven go you my child to everlasting life and take your husband also up to heaven but she could see the counsellors and kings in brilliant bearers of a famous name tangled with snakes and horrid crawling things sent down to torture and eternal flame then mrs kinfoot lied in agony o oh, lord i am as others of my class and station she cried oh have me bound and burnt and gored oh send me down to suffer my damnation i swear i beat my children oh despondent she was i am a sinner i will tell how i escaped a ducal correspondent last year my god i must insist on hell but the great judge was not deceived he knew the worthy virtue of the kinfoot line yet as she went to heaven constant true to principle she murmured will you dine to meet but dragged away she dwells on high and notes but rather disapproves the eccentricity of saints and early christians who try to lessen the burden of her domesticity she has to play upon a golden harp join in the chorus of the heavenly choir her answers to the saints are sometimes sharp she longs to singe her wings and share the fire night never comes so when she tries to flee to that perpetual party down below the angels catch her shouting out with glee dear mrs kinfoot you are good we know End of section. Section 7 of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. From the Valley of the Giants by Osbert Sitwell. We climbed beneath the tropic trees, like swords their leaves unfold, their limbs bear swelling gourds like tumors bearing blossoms that transcribe the wicked flicker of the insect tribe who drunk with heavy honey as with gore crawl on the fleshy petals till the roar of some huge creature that proud and alone prowls in the forest rouses them to drone within the venomed mesh of this rank mane flash sequent birds that tear the air in twain and flecked with fierce green light the hot ground seethes with buzzing furious sound as if it breathes in fever still we climb the cone-shaped hill till suddenly the living world is still the blood-red curtain of the sun is torn aside and through it there is faintly borne the slumbering night until there fell around a silence that meant more than any sound then like a waterfall did darkness come with splashing of cool winds that seemed like foam and in the dim pavilions above the crooning turtle 
who acclaims his love is rocked as on a wave and looks below in wonder do the rippling waters flow there with sweet movement will he see there soon clearly reflected the refulgent moon now those more arrogant birds that peck the fruit gilded by sunlight are ashamed and mute just as their jewelled plumes that caught the stark crude daylight colors now fade into dark while the dear humble dove bears on its wings the sheen that moonlight to deep water brings and those proud flowers like open wounds and spears are hid by darkness with its welling tears the dew has washed them and we only see the pallid blossoms that again set free nocturnal sweetness until now closed up within the ivory prison of each cup for here each evening when dusk falls the flowers are rung by gentle winds as bells and towers till in each chalice white and open wide the dew reflected stars tremble and hide for night more cruel than the cruel day hides and dissembles makes the moonbeam play in velvet soothing softness on that strife of trees and living things that men call life end of section section eight of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain mrs freudenthal consults the witch of endor by osbert sitwell a nose however aquiline escapes detection in a throng so she hopes but sense of sin made her shrink and steal along streets glazed by mocking summer heat the semblance of a cool canal where iridescent insects beat their wings upon the liquid wall where radiant insects carrion fed buzz and flutter busily smile or frown or nod the head expressing some familiar lie enter the house ascend the stair consult the scintillating ball beatrice freudenthal beware eve felt like you before the fall within the shining mystic globe lies luck at bridge or martyr's crown a modern prophetess will probe the future for one guinea down for that amount the future sword from crystal scabbard she will drag she can unpack the future's hoard as we unpack a gladstone bag without the agency of man solely by fasting and by prayer the wizards of old genghis khan could move a wine cup through the air until it reached him and he drank fermented juice of rye or grape the cup flew back his courtiers shrank away astonished and agape before the lama turns to grapple with state affairs he learns to spin despite sir isaac newton's apple in mid-air sixty times to win amusement mixed with approbation from sceptical ambassadors for any kind of levitation increases prestige with the powers such things were practice did not tend to promote war or anarchy yet now such things would even end a constitutional monarchy magic for a holy race is surely wrong how strictly hidden the future in its crystal case lies oh so near and yet forbidden though gentile kings upon their thrones may weave a spell or dance like titch yet ponder on the bleaching bones of saul who sought the endor witch end of section Section 9 of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Theatre of Varieties by Aldous Huxley. 
circle on circle the hanging gardens descend slope from the upper darkness each flower face open turned to the light and laughter and life trembling heat quicken and awake the air flutes and crying of strings assail the sense music the revelation and marvellous lie what is what is not truth and falsehood swim and mingle together on the bright trestles tumblers tamers of beasts dancers and clowns affirm their fury of life and in a thousand minds beget a thousand hallucinations dreams of beauty nightmares the world-renowned van hogen mogen in the master mystery of modern times he talks he talks more powerfully than music his quick words hammer on the minds of men observe this hat ladies and gentlemen empty observe empty as the universe before the head for which this hat is made was or could think empty observe observe the rabbit kicks a bunch of paper flowers blossoms in the limelight paper tape unrolls endless a clue ladies and gentlemen sharp sharp on malleable minds his words hammer the little indian boy enters the basket bright an ethiop's sword transfixes it and bleeding is withdrawn horror like a magnet draws the watching crowds toward the scene of massacre the walls bend forward to the revealing light and the pale faces are a thousand gargoyles thrust out spouting the ichor of their souls ladies and gentlemen the great van hogen mogen smiles and is kind a puddle of dark blood creeps slowly out the irremediable has ceased to be empty of all but blood the basket gapes arise he calls and blows his horn arise bird-like from the highest gallery the little indian answers shout upon shout the hanging gardens reverberate happy because the irremediable is healed happy because they have seen the impossible because they are freed from the dull daily law they shout they shout and great van hogen mogen modestly bows graciously smiles the band confirms the lie with loud triumphant blasts the curtain falls how quickly the walls recede and the stretched gargoyles re-become women and men who fill the warm thick air with rumour of their loves and discontents not suffering even great hogan mogan begetter of rabbits out of empty hats scorner of nature raiser from the dead to invade the sanctities of private life the lamps once more expire and the red curtain glows like a hearth behind the kindled ramp the hearth dissolves god's eyes of limelight grope about the darkness cross squinting squinting apart with splayed regard focus at last unanimously a pearly vision with an open mouth source of a sugared fountain see as she sings the eyes of god change colour voluptuously incarnadined with red then green for horror purple with condolence then at a blink go out disquietingly she sings o oh, revelation and marvellous lie till piccadilly blooms nothing but perfumed roses with never a rotting corpse in all its earth the six aerial sisters polpatini dive from trapeze to far trapeze with all the clockwork certainty of stars about his head sclopsus the juggler keeps in unremitting planetary dance a little host of silver spheres and ever quicklier throwing 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 builds up a solid arch of movement if he should drop an atom or if they lose hold too soon and fall but they can never fail for if they did what breath of panic would shake the pale flower faces that in the hanging gardens tranquilly bloom professor chubb's automaton performs upon the vials and virginals plays chess ombre and loo mistigri trick track 
pushpin sings lily bolero in falsetto answers all questions put to it and with its rubber feet noiselessly dances the antique heidegai is it a man the terrible infant asks and no they say whose business it is to say such infants no and no again they shout when after watching dobbs and debs step simultaneously through intricate dances hammer the same tune with their rattling clogs in faultless unison the infant wondering asks and they are they machines music the revelation and marvellous lie rebuilds in the minds of all a suave and curving kingdom of heaven under god's bright eyes an angel walks and with one rolling glance blesses sun-like each flower in the hanging gardens oh heavenly smile and god illumined glances hair of gold and marble brow and silken comeliness of limb divine they say having no words by which to call a spade a spade divine xenocrate beauty being mysterious is therefore god and love a pleasure indescribable is god again and awe the dark abyss where words fall wingless and lampless is also god xenocrate divine xenocrate father the terrible infant's voice is shrill why does a lady wear no skirts she wears no skirts god's eyes have never been brighter the face flowers open in her emanation xenocrate sun-like xenocrate she is the suave and curving kingdom of heaven made manifest to the eyes xenocrate her belly is like a mound of wheat her breasts are towers her hair like a flock of goats her foot is feet with diamond toes and she on legs of ruby goes xenocrate divine xenocrate the face flowers rustle in the flagellant wind of her loud singing a poet in the pit jots down in tears the words of her siren song so every spirit as it is most pure and hath in it the more of heavenly light so it the rarer body doth procure to have it in and is more fairly dight with cheerful grace and amiable sight for of the soul the body form doth take and soul is form and doth the body make now boys together all with me for of the soul the body form doth take together boys together and soul is form and doth the body make xenocrate alone alone divine god save the king music's last practical joke still sounding in their ears bugling of glory the folk stream out into the soft damp darkness of saturday night in camden town already next week's bills are being posted urim and thummim crosstalk comedians ringpock the magian of tibet the two bedelias ruby and truby dicks sam foy and troop of serio comic cyclists infinite in resource each week from now till doomsday the theatre of varieties offers something new twice nightly every evening from now till doomsday its hanging gardens bedded with pale flower faces will echo with ever new delight while on the shining trestles tumblers tamers of beasts dancers and clowns will affirm in strange new ways their everlasting fury of life end of section Section 10 of Wheels, The Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Hard of Hearing by Alan Porter. Once in April ways I heard the cuckoo call. Among more withering days, holmes twitched and clicked with heat. I heard the bumping fall of yellow plums. My feet drew bickerings from the grass like thunder rain on roofs or clattered arms of brass. 
horses battering hoofs ring no louder now than once a distant stream the grasshopper's old hussif row dies to remembered dream in bygone days i heard the swinging dewberry scratch to the flurried flight of a bird nor found it hard to catch the plashy drop when a trout came bow-bent leaping out i heard from pools and bogs the little barking frogs clapping water-weeds the hiss of sand wasps wings wind brattled campion seeds were close familiar things now nature's musics half are fled and half my heart is dead end of section section 11 of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain lovers by alan porter flat streams of light flow ribboning the road more black along the black new reined in air love coupled shades feel comfortable flesh the tree-tops lift their atlantean load and though they mutter let no pinpoint flare fall with a plum plop through the leafy mesh across the gloom two faces leap and i am dizzied their how more than moony power brighter than lamplit gleaming awes me mute are lovers fledged by flesh for this lark high pure candid flight do bodily beauties flower to ripe a strange and spiritual fruit end of section section twelve of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain blind by alan porter an old man tap tapping went a thin beech broken way so many straight unheedful trees before his footing lay that turn or stumble where he would he blundered full against a tree he did not seem to care but oh bitter bitter it was to me end of section Section 13 of Wheels, The Fifth Cycle. The Sleeper Fox recording is in the public domain. Child's Song by Leah McTavish Cowan. My mother was a harlot, my father was a clerk. My mother wore scarlet, my father a coat dark. They met once only, parted at morn, but from that lone lie was I born. When she grew bigger, mother in dread, pinched in her figure bore me dead they buried my body deep in a hole and prayed to god he would save my soul end of section section fourteen of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain time by Geoffrey Cookson From the French Time's horny nail the flesh of beauty flays, And round dumb lips grown weary of sweet lays, Graves deep the line to tell where laughter died. Blood curdles in the porphyry's veined pride, Day turns to ashes, heaven to marble cold, A trunk all gnarled the dryad's limbs enfold, the silvery voice in mocking echo calls thy flask an urn a sepulchre thy halls thy weeping soul with sad winds swept along of flesh and blood of laughter and of song of airy thought what symbol shapes the close a dove upon the wing a ruined rose 
End of section. Section 15 of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Mist and Cloud by Geoffrey Cookson. All Hellas in that rift. The vapours part, and straightway I look through into a land that laughs beneath the blue. Cloud frontiered, rainbow barred, the salient fastnesses of deer and pard. Pindus and Tempe, rhododendron starred. Soon they begin to lift. Slow partings first, loath arms linked tenderly round rock and cliff. Cold bosoms amorous leaned on armoured crags. Such long farewells, such trailing of white robes or black peat hags, silvered with springs and sprent with blue harebells. Such lingering in dells, such shy returns, in draughts of valleys wet with drooping ferns, and then, all rural, radiantly swift, they mount in pride, and, as a gift, leave to the golden day the green hillside. Some shreds are caught among the topmost trees, like visible spirits of the silences, succeeding slow with pauseful step. They glide across the glittering desert of the air, handmaidens fair. They go to dip their robes in founts of dawn, or in pure alabaster pitchers bear the dewy wine from forest wells deep drawn. So morning drew my fancy, like the mist, to follow after. But in the sullen mountain top, unkissed, or Sinai thundered terrible reproof and from such whoredoms held himself aloof, no friend of love or laughter. Above the gorge the trees were titans, the black rocks a forge, and audibly almost the vapour hissed, as, unto skyey roof and rafter, when Jove's lame armourer wrought against old revolts, rolled the dull reek of tempering thunderbolts. End of section Section 16 of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Eden by Geoffrey Cookson Light as the ascended breath of snow that climbs into the azure air, when Himalayan peaks are bare, and all their gloom-built gullies know the warmth of spring, and virginal as the white paps of eve unwed, in Eden bower the blossoms were. Their pearly lustre, half opaque, Pied with pink stain and purple strake, Drank up the liquid light That fed their green and leafy coronal, And in their matrix the faint stir of life That fallen Lucifer in likeness of a creeping snake Longed for, no motion made to strew the ground beneath them, And the dew despoiled them not, nor butterfly their motionless tranquillity bowed, nor light-fingered airs that pass let fall one petal on the grass. So calm it was in Eden bower, so heavenly calm by bush and brake, of beauty that completes the flower they had not lost a single flake. But oh, how fugitive and brief the perfect hour of bud and leaf! Was it a breeze or a wild bird, or the mature life within, that first their infant slumber stirred? Or Eve, when bending down her chin, she touched a petal with her breath? Five petals eddied to the earth, and straightening out his monstrous girth, where coiled among the leaves he hid, earthwards the watchful serpent slid, and made partaker of his mirth, the destined shadow men call sin, who told it to his brother, death. End of section. Section 17 of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Porphyro by Geoffrey Cookson. 
Music, like the wandering shower, whose variable voice is heard on lawny grass, in leafy bower, the slumbrous pearl of silence stirred, the trumpet neighs with high fanfare, the viol deep and violin, the looped awnings lifted are, and lo, a world of light within, a world of light, a world of flame, that lives and dies to music's beat, and there, upon the waft of fame, flew Porphyro with winged feet. Hot on the scent the eager pack may wind the wild deer up the glen, but who shall tread the dancer's track that dances on the hearts of men? The feigned dreams of false desire, their fetters round his footsteps wove, and from beneath, like flakes of fire, on crocus lawns in springtime, clove. And silent men of secret mien fanned the white skin of Egypt's queen, laid on her couch of emerald lawn. And shyly came the silk-eared fawn, the fawning satyr whisked his tail, with frolic grin and wrinkled mask, old Sylvan hopped well drunk with ale, and Bacchus squelched his goatskin cask, and flower-like nymphs from cloudless calm of Cyprian Olympus high, came down the slopes of pine and palm to see him dance and see him die. And he is but a brown-limbed slave, and she the horned queen of night. She draws him as the moon the wave. He spins her frantic satellite. Her lustful heart is full of pride. Her eyes upon his body feast. She motions to her dangerous side death's cupbearer, the mitred priest. The gilded poison is for thee that in the golden goblet swims. Thy frame, an arch of agony, cold trembling in thy comely limbs. Die, poor Pharo, to this long pause have come thy many wandered feet. The people thundered their applause, the emperor started to his feet, flung roses and a purse of gold. But death, your only realist, stole down the wings with whisper cold, and in my heart a serpent hissed. Better yet, and better yet, he will do it better yet. Heap roses, weathe him all the bays that toilers after fame can get. In the dark ending of his days, when none is nigh to blame or praise, he will do it better yet. End of section. Section 18 of Wheels the fifth cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Crocodile Discourses by Geoffrey Cookson I do not find it written in my slime that God is love, yet he is very good. For first he filed my teeth exceeding sharp and shut them in a trap of triple steel, gave me my Saurian ancestry, whereby I walk abroad unquestioned armiger and wear unrusted my tough coat of mail. Also, to deck a brother deity, for I am more than priest, if less than God, he offers lotus buds, and lends me stars to float upon my pool. And when I swim on moonless nights, they tremble in the wash and furrow of my wave. Familiar, as to a schoolboy ciphers on a slate, I meditate my deep astrology reading the cycles and conjunctive hours that ripen for my maw, the virgin's breasts, the young wife's womb. They have no time to scream. I trip so smoothly down the darkling stair and paddle in the deeps. My pool is called Silence, the deadener of unseemly noise that rends so woundily the clamorous air. I do not roar like loud and vulgar beasts, but on a soft bed lay them tenderly, striving to calm them, lest they tear the flesh. There the poor gape, that is their voiceless scream, no echo has but bubbles. Soft, so soft the seasoned flesh. The after-dinner sleep in reed-break or thorn-thicket, sanctified with comfortable closing of the lids and beatific smile of blessedness and the peculiar care of providence 
humbly acknowledged, sign, misunderstood, but not the less sincere. Ah, yes, the fool hath said, there is no God, but I am wise. Therefore to him, who for his servant's food, fattens the suckling, strews with fin and spawn my pool, and fills with splash of silver rain, I give among warm rocks and water-weeds amphibious thanks. Thus far the crocodile, reading his thesis Theologi, and all admitted it extremely sound. End of section. Section 19 of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Ambush by William Keen Seymour. Wild one, wild one, fleeing through the woods, your skin is rent with thorns, dark fear is in your eyes. A deer was caught by giant snakes with soft and gleaming hoods. They are winding round her heart until she dies. Wild one, wild one, quiet now your heart. The doe was white and beautiful, her eyes were fires of pain. Tis bitter, for the chase I willed is ended ere the start. By strong pursuing hounds I wished her slain wild one wild one break not from me so the woods are fierce with hunger and a day has fled the skies but in the house his tenderness and dreams o oh god i go from the terror of his hands and hooded eyes end of section section twenty of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain stars by william keen seymour in the sharp splendour of a star we know what timeless souls we are and apprehend the uncharted seas where throng our gilded argosies freighted with heavy bales of sense we sail not knowing why nor whence nor whither ever thrusting on against huge seas aloof alone end of section section twenty one of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain the flame by William Keane Seymour To John Flanagan You shall take paint, and I take words, And both shall colour life with dream. Your thoughts shall glow, and mine, like birds, Shall sing more proudly than they seem. Yet we shall never be appeased, this drouth and hunger of the soul is too essential to be eased with beauty lesser than the whole. Our five sweet senses shall not slake the fire that was before we came. Ah, struggle on for beauty's sake and give your flaming heart to flame. End of section. Section 22 of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. The Sleeper Vox recording is in the public domain. Sramazan by William Keane Seymour. For a ballet. Sramazan sits dying. His slaves stand in silence. Nubians. Syrians leashed to his nod. Death is on his dark brow with fierce, keen jewels. Who has heard the treading of the cat faced god? Has anyone heard? Incense to the sun chinks wreathes. Balconied girls move fans in the gloom. Ostrich, flamingo, and peacock feathers. 
in that great ivory ebony room has anyone heard a silver sprung fountain flowers and shadow spurtles and sings from emerald heads of crested lizards has anyone felt his shuddering wings wearily sramazan watches a blue monkey from gold chains swinging chattering her teeth clenching her paw with loathing of the goldfish swift and lustrous in the pool beneath heavily he sighs and looks to the still curtain where srab stands huge with curved monstrous blade bring me saisha while my eyes have vision that i may pass the shadows unafraid the wing stirred then i heard his velvet treading samazan starts up with deep hungering eyes saisha tinkling is running past the eunuchs spins on the throne steps where he dies saisha undulant with glittering allurements mimes and quivers to pluck to murmurous strings the orange pavement twirls to her rhythm death by the curtain furls his wings sramazan from his throne of jade and silver casts great sapphires and chrysolites down whispering hoarsely praises of the sorceress saisha whirling slender and brown see how burningly he gazes upon her the dance wanes she sways as a tall lily sways the wings rushed then his tired face is ashen death threads softly the whispering maze the dance ends how like a dying bird she flutters goldenly she falls and shivers and is still for the soul of sramazan pray o ye people the years are sorrows the gods fulfil srab moves swiftly the chattering blue monkey squeals and a girl screams satra arise thy little feet shall go afar with sramazan the sword smites hissing in a storm of sighs End of section. Section twenty three of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. The Sleeper Vox recording is in the public domain. Laughing Lions Will Come by Sacheverell Sitwell. The prophet from his desert cave listens to the sound of water, lapping with tongues the fringes of the sand young flowers open for the bees a roadway for the yellow sun climbs from the hills into the fallow sea the scented bells hold golden sound and the strong lion drinks the salted waves cooling his mane within the sudden foam the bee skirts tremblingly the shining dew looking for honey in the golden dells while the lion shakes the loud hills again this early morning there may lie some gold forgotten when the light was fled to-day the great beams may shine on opened caves where run swift rivers shooting their arrows at the swordless sea and blind to the sun whose shining armor shows in the sky among the clouds he charges driving them across a wind-walled field into the shelter of the towering hills honey may be hiding in the waking flowers the man in armor hides behind the gold the strongest waves far off are snow these are dangers to the daring robber the armored impotence of man-made deity and crowd thick barking heads on the lion-like sand gathering honey in the rolling desert such are the perils to a fasting prophet dog-like men and men like gods many doors lie open into his cave for lion springs flash of the surging sea and dogs that bark to bar him from his palm to leave his cave and walk on the burning sand he passes the sun that bridles his yellow mane and the roaring crowd in ocean of clashing waves 
tightrope dancers run over the roofs and fall in the marketplace raising a laugh it looks like walking on the rainbow's bridge among the clouds behind the windows there below fly the flags of smoke waving possession at the lords at home and works a creator in his own fair garden where trees spring as fountains lift into the air their branches steadied in the height with wings that quiver in the stream of wind and by the cold are frozen as they drop before they foam again as fiery darts piercing the soft breasts of the pool they tremble above the water bird-like with flashing feathers is zarathustra armoured that he goes leaving his cave down mountains fording swift rivers to attain the town the tightrope dancers had turned back again waving their wands to balance a sharp curve they stagger as a child who learns his walk using a crutch in place of human hand holding his own high above the head to guide him on an easy level path guitars are played by men upon high stilts stepping over gardens to keep up the tune because the dancers only move with music with creaking leg and hollow tread they walk among the houses chase the rope and whisper warning while they play more loud below the cripples lean out from their corners and a dwarf or two will strain his little stride to run like a child holding a strong kite this is the magnet drawing every eye when zarathustra comes behind the curtain of the gold horizon walks into the town through the deserted gates judges are holding back the wheel of time fitting the spokes to figures on a watch as they follow the competitors on airy paths he walks beneath an archway hears his tread multiplied and echoed in this empty hall and then is alone again on the empty street stepping out firm he starts to sing turns the corner and is in the square his song a loud river that now joins the sea who will he first step up to take by the shoulder to break down his stare will he stoop down to a dwarf and shout ask him to run across the square and beg the mayor to stop festivities a moment is it too dangerous to hold a stilt shouting out loud into the noisy air to attract attention from a wooden giant if he holds a stilt and stops the music down will tumble all the tightrope dancers and the men who play the mandolines cannot stand still shout as loud as he possibly can he will never drown the music and the roaring crowds one course one only is there to his hand wonder and marvel are the joys to-day and this is the course that he must tread god goes on a cloud but the dancers walk there and the crowd shout louder than the singing of his angels thinking a moment zarathustra stopped stroked his beard and hesitated till his mind lit up without a cry without a word he started running down the square raced ever quicker till he reached a wall no sooner touched it than he turned again running ever faster than the way he came reached the starting point turned once more raising a dust to hide his face the men on stilts look down like birds who watch for prey in the glistening grass and dropped the instruments from their hands the dancers when the music stopped swayed on their ropes and fell like stars flashed through the air with trailing sparks and opened on the ground their clumsy petals the dwarfs and cripples raised themselves came from their corners into dazzling sun and ran among the crowd to start them running soon zarathustra showed in front just behind were the men on stilts after them the able-bodied ran followed by cripples and the bounding dwarfs half of them were running from right to left while zarathustra showed from left to right soon he caught the laggards and the limping halt and ran among their crutches by the jumping dwarfs this time turning down a narrow street he ran into a house and climbed the shaking stairs out from the window on a roof he stepped while the people ran up stairways like a flood inside a well down a drain-pipe on the ground again 
he heard the tumbling ceilings and the roofs fall in while the survivors took the road again zarathustra ran out from a gate once more till he reached the burning sand and fell back breathless blind from the dust and dead with running clouds of dust still rose from the town blurred murmurs and the tread of hundreds running i won attention by my ruse shouting was vain and had i showed floating above them on a cloud they would have guessed me lowered from a tower treading the yielding clouds like a man through snow so i had to run among them like a wind but for all my running they have never seen the stride of my footsteps but thought themselves each and each other to contain the cause my years of meditation in a cave gave more hope for another visit but now that they run themselves around the town nothing will stop them but themselves alone if someone with young lungs blew out through a trumpet the last chance for man it would be a feature in their entertainment i must look at the sun who sinks to die and pours his treasures to the sea to keep guarding them with tempest and a change of tide so that in sinking to the sunless caves where they lie to light the darkness till he comes again the poorest fisherman has golden oars to row with over the echoing waves suddenly shaking their yellow manes to sound new music to the gods below and when the gold is taken from the oars the music ceases and the waves are mute till a new wind whispers from the thirsty trees and the fisherman can hoist his sail end of section section twenty four of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain et in arcadia omnes by sir cheverell sitwell from the bird actors the stars but prophets call them sons of god lay in the fresh field and the cool wind trod striding across the bodies where they slept and woke them to the glory that they kept all day in bondage until darkness came when movement flowed as water gold as flame the gods now rise and let the new light run rippling its quick strong life and substance spun from fluttering wings and fiery breasts of clouds along their limbs just risen from the shrouds of death-like slumber till they play again blue hills far island watch them and the plain above white clouds the stars come from their tent on which to-day's dead light spills lustre spent and feeble after fiery beams and bars have burned the sea with madness earth with wars and made still waters mirror in their glass the gold-hung woods and gliding clouds that pass dip their tall towers like pennons in the lake and hidden from the sun their thirst they slake till at the time the nightingales begin the clouds have vanished and the night is thin now at their settled stations in the sky the stars are still or spread their wings to fly are motionless or moving with their gold through heavens wide as water and as cold looking between sharp edges of the leaves beneath black shadowed houses and their eaves still shining in the evening rain there show unfolding flowers that tremble as they grow and several ships with glittering sails of glass swim the blue seas or float beneath the mass of towering cliffs down which the gold men leap cross the wide sands run down the shelving steep ride on the foam and climb the golden ropes until the soft breathed wind fulfil their hopes now that the sky is once more set with signs from balconies above the tree that shines with fan-like agitation of the wind revolving its lush petals till they bind their spinning dance into a formless round 
the people lean and listen to the sound of voices parting the dim green and strings that wave-like beat their foam upon the wings flashing below the crystal fall of song which melting drops in music on the throng from bird throats kissing the warm air there drops the mingling of cool snow and flame through stops of flute-like tongues that gather fire from light to make their honey golden to our sight the poorest even have their hour of pleasure when the daylight fails and the more advanced young women play the piano while the more advanced young men accompany them with song and those who cannot play their part sit in the window at a late hour all the voices stop the day's perpetual sound is dead so still now that you think the singers must still be in that room the women sleeping with the half-closed eyes of waxwork figures and the men as plaster carrier tides upholding the low roofs of lodging houses on their sad crushed heads the next few hours are far the best in which to temper truth with a trite compromise in more imaginative lands our instruments are still the strings that carry every trembling confidence through a half-open window till stepping to the water's edge you see your own tall shadow in the clear windows of the water with white pointed mask abetting your new self disguised and all the music of the air obeys the silver presence singing in the trees and giving time its intervals of lucid silence while the wind touches the taut strings of the sea and the waterfalls of light drip through the leaves upon the dew-drenched grass if such and such sit in the gamut of one's life within the same close box of yellow bricks under a mutual roof bow from the windows if you walk beneath and leash themselves to let you climb the stairs is not a little latitude allowed for subtle insolence and half-veiled threats calling through the lattices of leaves at those wreathed windows where flower-like the gold light hangs wise birds repeat as echoes from cool caves the words they're taught a wall of cactus guards the virgin sound of piano scales ringing the changes in a small schoolroom and on the black keys hammering with the hard beak of woodpeckers on a moss-grown tree from all around young ardent voices reiterate the aged sentiments while a brave few try the spiral stairs spinning like blown smoke to the glittering stars half lost in the damp breath of clouds that tarnish the gilt edges of their song through the splintered stillness sounds like small animals creep from their holes and from a hundred various heights from terraces of all the shaking fields of leaves the frail ladders on which our meaning climbs span the blue air until they touch the sodden ground music that on the stooping sails of wind drifting divides the distance and can bind those it has chosen with a supple string keeping them motionless to feel her wing can negative the constant turn of time and make long minutes shorter than the chime of waters bruising the white foam of waves before whose rush the sea gods seek their caves thus at the music beating through a wall tired limbs revive and shadows seem the tall and flashing figures walking by a lake known faces unknown bodies slowly shake their dancing skeletons to normal flesh and walking in warm light within a mesh of memories that follow on the scent the once again remembered wishes bent on embraces or the easier art of flight sent around persons crushed beneath the might of phrases blown like trumpets but to fall deafened by loud sound stifled by the pall of soaring wings too heavy for their weight the music dying ceases and the mate of every big ambition faints away gone are the dreams the darkness lives 
till day with staring light rehearses all the ills poured down on us each morning from the hills but now before ambition starts its reign and crowns itself within the sleeping brain a fitting altar for a mocking rite the hours arrive which offer to our sight in place of sun motes in a dancing air the lively brilliance of crowds laid bare and in the place of serenading winds a surfeiting of subtle sound that binds the plumage of the trees and makes them still while murmurs run as water from a hill down to the valleys where they form a flood and rising fill the veins of trees with blood break the quiet spell and run their fire along thrilling the leaves until they shout the song of rolling river and of gliding cloud more moving than the sea and still more proud of boughs fanning the liquid air until the wind comes back and breathes into each quill and then quite suddenly the birds begin throwing their brilliant spirals through the thin clear pavers to the vaster vaults of air white caravans of clouds are listening there the murmurs are soft whispering of men drinking the evening fall of coolness when the dappled light gives intervals of shade arching the light ribbed dark with shadows made of moving shapes and lattices of green that trace their sudden sharpness where between tall houses and the deep diapered woods dim voices meet and mix their various moods the flickering darkness covers as a cloak those hidden there when certain changes broke the set calm and lit the still air with fire before whose flames the old and ill retire the beating blood gives wings that flash and lift to bodies whose young signs of life they sift from evidence and symbol of decay to feel the freshened splendour of new day rise from the ashes where you lay so long stand up triumphant resolute and strong the cowering darkness is as oil to fire intended but to multiply your ire your wings must carry you to cleave the cloud and take the treasure from its castle proud building white bastions above the waves to hold the icy heart within its caves for bribe the gold upon the glittering trees lies there for you as honey for the bees the streams and running currents of the air is path and roadway for your footstep there and walking then above the wide stretched land the flower scents reach their blossoms to your hand and now to send a shiver through the leaves and thrill with melody the gathered sheaves touching the fields beyond the reach of sound to light the gathered gold upon the ground the clouds dissolve and show a sea of glass still islands and the floating ships that pass on earth once more the music guides your feet annihilating distance till you meet the moment comes to don your first disguise and posture it before the sightless eyes vast imbecile mentality of those who cannot tell a thistle from a rose this is for others but for one alone the altered aspect and the change of tone for one alone yet others in these hours show greater changes and more subtle powers they glide in carriages past flashing green fans and dropping curtains liquid with sheen of waters echoing every shaft of light that fills an avenue too long for sight until the gold spoke fits the wheel on high moving in majesty along the sky from lakes that flash like mirrors or like swords the echoes send back shuddering sounds and words and multiply the moving shafts and wells fashion new glory and invent fresh spells to crack the glass of silence with the tongues that throw like fountains and have fire for lungs they come by water with a white sail blown like a taut cloud like a gaudy shell shown through clear water on the pale plains of sand as a city with carved towers on gold strand or float more gently 
crossing a still world, using their oars as wings, with wide sails furled. Make the soft sound of feathers as they dip to wave the water back and press the lip. Floating still further on the troubled glass that shows its secrets and the mountain's mass, a wanton warmness breathes on them below the shaking smoothness, and white bodies show that ride the slight waves holding to the mains. Men on galloping horses down the plains. Clearer water shows the fine limbs that tempt the dwellers in wild places, rough, unkempt. If such there were, who lived among these woods, crowding upon the bank, they'd fire their moods and carry her white body to the caves to catch the cataracting force of waves and gratify the unaccustomed touch. Soothe with cool snow of limbs the heat, of such blind, flower-like, Followers who track the sun and know the causeways where his feet have run, treading through clear clouds the tree tops. Below he dyes the leaves with brilliance to show the glittering windows and the shining roofs. Pavilions that tremble as his hoofs sound in the orchards where he stoops to hang gold apples on high trees, through which there rang laughter like dropping water, till sweet tears. The rain showers fell to dissipate their fears. Small suffering and short lived pain distill this elixir of happiness, and still, among the drums and crystal gongs of rain, voices are calling, and we know the rain is ended, and the brilliant fruit begin to grow to fullness and to paint their skin. Daring the danger and the treacherous shore, they swim above the never plundered store of shadows where the finished cup of sky contains the waters and the hills so high. They touch the trees that wave on the far bank and shake the mirrored stillness of their rank. Green are the safest places in the grass to hide your comfort from the feet that pass. And little caves between the trees green dark give you their stillness and no need to hark for prying voices while near music rings to keep the people practising their wings, for while they tread the tightrope of the tune and walk on air through clouds, as if to prune these flowers, which grow in clusters high above the leaf-marked waters, lying there to prove the strength of silver, or the lure of gold, as night or day, with cowardly or bold appearance bribes the white flowers the waves, or, with fierce countenance, controls his slaves. Others can rest motionless, apart, until the moment for their play can start, in caverns, leaf-hung bowers, or grots they lie, and live their pastorals, before the shy pipes or piercing trumpets make this pretense no longer binding, and no more offence. From other windows other gods may lean, their sons mark space, with intervals of clean waterfalls of rippling light. Golden walls protecting proud gods echo through their halls new signs and symbols acted in the air, unknown to us, but seen by clear eyes there. And from the windows each can watch his son leave heavens of sparkling brilliance to shun the drifting gardens with sweet-breathing trees blown down the wide sky. For they choose the lees and sifted dregs of goodness, where they find sweet fruits of conquest and of loss combined. As soon as ever the deep woods are still, the hollow valley and the hanging hill murmur with liquid voices, till, in turn, the woods reply with fiery sounds that burn and cleanse the dim night, for the gods to reach trees rising like green cliffs above a beach. The carriages arrive, release their load beneath green arches, where the grass is mowed smooth as the sea, and through its depth as clear. The leaves, like men on cliffs, can gaze down sheer and watch, beneath the dancing boughs of waves, people leaving carriages like caves, step into the sunlight, for a moment blind. Dazed by the dropping splendour that they find, they stagger like men in the far-flung spray of the shivered waves 
on a stormy day. But the foam, falling like snow down the air, is dust in wide beams of the sun, whose hair gilds the blue zenith that he leaps along with lion-like limbs and loud voice so strong. End of section Section 25 of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Swiss Rhapsody by Sir Cheverell Sitwell To the native, Miss Frieda Vidma Lausanne Station, 10.42, 9.42 Verve Platform, 10.18, 9.18 Clockwork God who regulates this brew Think where your passengers have been. Three different times, three separate stages. Living, comatose, or dead. On far-off continents, or under clouds through showers of rain, in golden searchlights, pouring down to show the circle in the triangle. The rolling wheels of clocks, set in the pyramids and spires. I see a town halfway between this station and the one we've left and that yields yet another time, completing a set quadrature. Then this is north, east, south, and west. Before I've time to think again, taking a passport and a bag, I jump a barrier and run. I choose a bearing and a cab, and drive along an avenue, five francs, desk, key, 348. And then I take my slippers and a dressing gown. I thought I'd interrupted Ezra, bathing in this Swiss hotel. I looked again and saw it was an avalanche that fell. A mound of flesh, a gush of hair, a soul imprisoned in white tiles. But none the less I dreamed, I knew, and sure enough, my dreams came true. To the tune of the march from William Tell I'm sure you will think that I say too much when I tell of the snow and a heat so fierce. So hot was the water when I turned the tap, I declare I forgot these were winter months. It was dark, but a new moon marked the skies. I'm sure that I saw it through the glass. I left the water and took a towel, and tried to find it, but the glass was thick. Slipped on the floor, missed the mat, and fell, till at last I got up too late to know. They rang a bell, and I seized my clothes, for I knew that they served table d'hôte but once. I was right, and I lost. I was late. They were cruel. It was cold. Not enough. They refused. And I left. I went to the window. Below lay the lake, and the lights of the town shone out through the night. I said to myself, shall I buy some milk to drink with the chocolate that they sell? The shops were shut. It was past ten, judging by the average time. I was left hungry all that night. No use to grumble till the light. I went to bed and tried hard to sleep, but was prevented by a thirst. I dreamt of icebergs served with spoons, and felt a chagrin at their loss. So hungry, so weary, the gold sky signs sang of a sixpenny cure for the world. Just then I recovered, awoke, and remembered the fresh light flooded the curtained room. The shepherds sang songs on the hills, the valleys echoed crystal bells, they answered many morning prayers and glided down the mountain rills. Editor's Note A letter from the native, in appreciation of this poem, will be found at the end of the book. End of section Section 26 of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Profiteer Williamson Pursues Culture by John J. Adams The orange and vermilion lights twinkled among the indigo trees. Williamson, in violet tights, converses with the blonde marquise. Troops of parrots madly squawk, streaming out of Africa. Madame la Marquise, will you walk serenely into Asia? Evidence of rumbling gongs, peacock silk and porcelain, fat Jewesses, roaring songs surge and squeeze down Petticoat Lane. 
all the lanterns gaily swing all the gongs and all the drums madame hear these maidens sing poignant lyrics of the slums shall we be grotesque and why madame do you stint your mirth in my country's service i earn my bulbousness and girth tropical and sultry note in the night blurred suddenly Parrot, your conspicuous coat is but protective mimicry shall we indeed await the dawn or something else to talk about the blonde marquise to hide a yawn puts delicate lilac fingers out williamson grows old again stares down at his sagging paunch dew is falling a sudden pain pierces his rheumatic haunch rolling ships approaching port coloured seamen wreathed in smiles apes and birds of every sort brought from garish tropic isles coloured seamen leave the sea williamson becomes absurd coloured men oh come to me i will purchase many a bird lanterns out and music dumb and the rain descending fast madame if you will not come i shall leave you to your past every one has gone to bed would that i were every one there is nothing to be said there is nothing to be done End of section. Section twenty seven of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Cafe Confidences by John J. Adams. Coffee, cigarettes, thick blue air restless walls heaving themselves about in discreet anglified cubism on the other side of the little table you were a smouldering spark and a thicket of black hair and you talked a farrago of considered cynicism if coffee be the food of love say on there will be good men yet in kensington singular young woman how you rattle on what do you think about when you are alone kensington bored you the slade formed you gloomy young woman of the cafe what make you here you should be picking buttercups in devonshire you were saying considered as an anodyne brandy has qualities not found in wine if i am an intellectual then i am an intellectual i can't help it can i anyhow what does it matter the world will go round just the same it is just a silly game life gets flatter and flatter i contemplate it all with the vacant grin of an infant or an idiot i shall soon be old shall i soak my sick soul in a tumbler of gin my grandfather sold butter and cream in tavistock market he fell in the road when he was drunk and all the wheels of all the carts from tavistock market rolled gaily over him good old grandpapa he had his spree each market day for centuries who would have thought he'd help to put on the market a thing like me sometimes i laugh about it quite a lot End of section. Section twenty eight of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Eminence by Sherard Bynes. It is not only savour that does arise from that field whither the gulls follow the plough the colour is not but colour also quick token of raw life red brown a promise of yield earth passionate clamouring to be sown earth salacious genetrix of comical worms and larvae earth laughing at the people 
she quiet they vexed litigating for her earth faithful nursing men with their milk of grain earth wanton and dangerous green of fat warts jewels the flowers at her body's curves and hollows at mating month the grouped flowers little yellow frilled mouths that smell of white wine earth austere submitting to the frosty rods of january defensive of her seed earth riddle maker under unlimited stars the god's eyes pulling our souls down to her for her beauty heart breaking now darkly seen now illumined now gone earth whom cities do explain a little conquer not godmother with gold and unexpected wells assuaging queen of green-haired tree spirits and the spirits of boulders the robed in lichen of still pools where a wicked shadow is chained to the floor for punishment of turfy downs hecate ephesian dian slim adonis the chase priope deliberate of seeming caprice the brooding one looking alway to show forth more life and godhead and metamorphosis giving the resurrection of the body earth pungent of unknown fury and desire in the green growing things as much as beasts hunting disposer who proves not of souls departed end of section section twenty nine of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain the king's daughter by sherard vines dodecasyllabics the garments of the king's daughter are of wrought gold first armor heavy her cloak of yellow plaques each have different gravure Caledri, Chimerae, Sphinxes joined in battle, Lycanthropes in love. The eyes are jewels, red or green, Scales of nacre, Claws, platinum inlaid, It is fringed with sapphires. Within her dress is one piece crushing the breasts To mountains marble white, with wandering veins like blue ore it is harsh with the cruelty of a thousand diamonds sewn in cusps in volutes and arabesques harsher the intimate garments against her skin woven in fine gold wire her skin is like orchid more penitential than the horsehair shirt as she moves each point of gold chafes or pierces her white flesh yet proud she bows suffering from her palanquin the ethiopes who carry it with huge muscles suffer less how gold and white against their black but the little women pandemic whose one shift in blue with white stripes shows the generous freedom of round limbs stained apricot and as downy and warm as one ripening at midday feeling the torrid dust barefooted jeer after her long live princess sarcophagus who for all her gold is charnel a byword for the young men of the town End of section. Section thirty of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Love Lyric by Sherard Vines. 
I sometimes love you, as a convert, on the bench of penitence weeping, loves the stream of raw benediction that floods away his sin, shuddering in the delight of cleanness. At other times, as a caprite, chasing you in the sunshine, along a lonely level beach where my hoof points send the brazen sand and brown green fucus scattering, till I leap at you, grinning, fighting for breath, while you cling to the ground at first like a limpet, gasping, in a way that suggests a giggle or a sob. Sometimes I want, with you, to hire little back rooms where the paper is torn downward like hangnails for an hour. On days when it is cold, and there is a great deal of business at the office, I don't love you at all. End of section. Section 31 of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Dahlia by Sherard Fines. Indolent in crimson plush, the dahlia blooms beside the wall, flaring soon after dawn, on mist transmuted into motes of brass, like a mistress whom the years made terrible and stark and tall. She burns, loosening the slight but acrid smell of dahlias, or like a star that is a mouth with many lips in puckered lust to drink the decadence of gold in foliage doomed to winter dust end of section section thirty two of wheels the fifth cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain the soul's defence by Sherard Fines. The soul has four gates to her hall, set to the four points cardinal. The first is the gate boreal, the second gate oriental, the third gate meridional, the fourth the gate occidental. Now when these strong winds do arise, which encompass all paradise, from the starless caves which see neither god nor his enemy winds braggart winds most terrible that in a whining tune do tell of domed blue vaults so vast that he loses from his inventory many lost souls and thinks them free or obscene winds in entry seek with suppliant clamour soft and thick then in fear and then in hate she shuts her steel her silver gate her gate of brass her gate of gold against these burning winds and cold ghostly enemies without form brewers of mischief in a storm who gabble in a wicked tongue when all sky is overhung with dull clouds and yellow scars sinister masters of the stars yet if she be no prudent soul but wanton and conceived a fool she will admit such as do think for nothing but their meat and drink who would defile her house until mocking her they take their fill of her consuming utterly more than her feeble harlotry slake themselves with all and leave nothing behind nothing to grieve nothing but what is wrecked and marred the dead shadow the broken shard that messengers before the day mercifully will sweep away end of section section thirty three of Wheels, the Fifth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Toilette of Murrany by Edith Sitwell. 
siesta time is hot in hell down the glittering shutters fell with a noise arabian like the rustling pearls that fan the eyes of rajahs when they hide beyond the incense flowing tide their majesty all lonely save for the hot nubian sun their slave and like the lovely light gazelles walking by deep water wells shadows past her mirrors fleet through bright trellises of heat through the shutters fawning crept a barber's zephyr cringing stepped through the shutters fallen like water hiding hell's most lovely daughter the sun a ripened apricot still made the flattened rooftops hot and at her table preened and set murini sits at her toilette madame murini if you please fawning said the barber breeze i will quaff as light as air that arabian wind your hair never had the perfumed seas such bright great black curls as these fallen like rustling pearls that run burnt by the hot nubian sun from each elephantine trunk the waterfalls rear murini shrunk but now the barber zephyr curls black cornucopias of pearls upon the dressing-table heat is flaunting like a parakeet and in the street dust white and lean two black apes bear her palanquin through the shutters see those apes eyes like green and golden grapes their falsetto voice is made a false simian serenade the negress dinah through unheard shutters like the sun's gold gourd bears her powder puff the breath of an angel a swan's death never once murini replies to those apes with slanting eyes she died a thousand years ago from dust her beauty ripened slow but franfreluche her parrot closes with the ballerina roses pecks them dinah longs to snatch the night to make her beauty patch End of section.